Indeed, the strangest and weirdest things live in the deep, and explorers have found pretty bizarre things in the dangerous depths of water. Previous research has suggested that the depths below the Antarctic ice shelves are too cold and nutrient-poor to sustain life. However, a new study has challenged researchers' understanding of life in extreme environments. Just what can survive in the brutal conditions of the Amazon? How does life thrive in anti-life conditions? Join us as we uncover what Joe Rogan tells us that the Navy saw whilst diving in the Arctic. The Arctic body history in the year 1958. A United States submarine made history by being the first craft to reach the North Pole. Thanks to that, now scientists have a whole new planet to investigate. Also, thanks to its mission these days, nuclear-powered submarines are stealthy weapons of destruction and deterrence that can travel with torpedoes and nuclear missiles for months at a time. This mission was also a scientific milestone that helped pave the way for a new era of exploration and discovery about the unusual environment beneath the Arctic ice. It served as a test bed for the military potential of nuclear submarines. Both the Navy and scientists get new knowledge about the Arctic Ocean and the environment in which they operate. With the use of submarines, we have access to a whole new world, a hostile environment that helps us comprehend both the present situation as well as the future state of the environment. Not only does Antarctica remain the coldest continent, it is still the least explored and holds the most mysteries. Think of the Antarctic as a treasure trove that is simply waiting to be discovered. Despite its isolation and ominous climate, nothing is simple when you are in the midst of ice or surrounded by so much ice. Griffith's big discovery Hugh Griffiths, a British Antarctic survey marine biogeographer and the study's lead author says a team of geologists was trying to collect a mud sample from underneath the ice shelf but kept hitting a large boulder. The team deployed their equipment with a GoPro camera attached to see what the holdup was, he says. At first, the rock was a massive inconvenience that impeded them from retrieving a sediment sample, he said. But when they showed the video footage to biologists back in the United Kingdom, Griffiths took a closer look. The geologist told Griffiths they could see a few strange shapes, and they weren't sure what they were, he said. Initially, he figured the objects were typical deep-sea sponge organisms. But when geologists revealed where the sponge sighting took place hundreds of miles away from food, Griffiths believed the researchers had stumbled upon something extraordinary. When it comes to the deep sea in the Antarctic region, researchers have an 80% to 90% chance of discovering something new to science, he says. Scientists don't believe the sponges are related to other creatures they've been finding on Antarctic ice shelves, he says. But until we manage to get our hands on one, we'll never be able to answer that question. Other questions remain until the sponges are examined in person. Their bleak, freezing environment has no light or food sources, Griffiths says, meaning any food they come across has to drift in sideways over extremely far distances. The chances of getting food are really low. That raises questions about how often these animals even feed, he said. We know that some Antarctic sponges can live a very long time, even up to tens of thousands of years. So, are these things only feeding once a year, once a decade, or once a century? The habitat they're living in is directly under a huge ice sheet that is threatened by climate change, meaning there's a chance scientists could lose the opportunity to learn more about these mysterious animals. If nothing changes in how humans respond to climate change, he worries about the impact on Antarctica's environment. Fortunately, the ice shelf these creatures live under is relatively stable. The discovery of these sponges proves there's more to unearth in the depths of the ocean. So, what bizarre thing exactly did Joe Rogan discover about the Antarctic? And is there a civilization that predates ours? Joe Rogan's shocking discovery on Antarctica Antarctica has been the subject of significant exploration, and many people have done their best to uncover some of its biggest secrets. Joe Rogan, arguably the world's most popular podcaster, has been one such person over the years. His podcast has played host to several scientists and explorers who've spoken about some of the secrets of this region. Joe Rogan has been on his podcast for well over a decade now in that time. He and his guests have come up with quite a lot of wild theories and arguments. Because of that, it's pretty rare for you to ever see Joe shocked out of his mind. However, back in 2022, he got a pretty shocking revelation that left him stunned on an episode. In August of 2022... Joe had a guest on his podcast who told him about Operation High Jump. Operation High Jump was a military exercise that happened in Antarctica back in the 20th century, which involved President Harry Truman and the Nazis. Operation High Jump did exist officially. Titled the United States Navy Antarctic Developments Program, the exercise went on from 1946 to 1947, and it was led by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byatt. 
The operation consisted of 13 warships, about four 700 military personnel and several aerial vehicles and machines. Official records show that Operation High Jump had a simple objective, to train military personnel in extremely cold conditions and to determine the feasibility of establishing military bases in Antarctica. President Truman and the American government had been curious about Antarctica and the fact that the area was largely untapped, and they were looking at to pretty much to establish American sovereignty. In the 1970s, scientists came upon a breakthrough that demonstrated just how much of this region has been untapped since the dawn of time. They discovered that an entirely different ecosystem was existing and thriving in the Antarctic waters. To date, an estimated 400 lakes have been found beneath the surface of the Antarctic floor. These lakes sit under three kilometers of ice and scientists believe that the lakes were formed during the separation of Antarctica from Gondwana land, a supercontinent that broke up during the Jurassic period. And thanks to underwater pressure, the lakes have managed to continue flowing all these years instead of just freezing up becoming moving blocks of ice. Lake Vostok, which was discovered in the 1990s, remains the largest sub-glacial lake discovered in the region at 25 kilometers below the ice. The lake had a temperature that clocked in at minus 3 degrees despite being covered by ice for 20 million years. Lakes like this have also been found to hold existing ecosystems, much to the surprise of scientists. Even though these species haven't been exposed to light in millions of years, they continue to exist and thrive thanks to gases like methane and ammonium which they can use to create energy. Pyramids in Antarctica Pyramids in Antarctica when you hear of pyramids, the first thing that comes to mind is the pyramids in Giza, Egypt. The pyramids of Giza are the most popular in the world, showing a massive ingenuity and creativity on their own. However, back in 2016, satellites hovering about the Antarctic region found something rather strange, a weird formation that appeared to be peering out the ice. It appeared that the ice had melted away, and this formation was pretty much peeking its little nose out on the region. It was difficult to reach, scientists believe, that this was the man-made pyramid that was erected hundreds of thousands of years ago. At the very least, the fact that there are man-made pyramids in Antarctica tends to lend some credence to the belief that humans settled in this area before we knew anything. Some scientists even believe that these pyramids show that there was an entire civilization of humans that lived in this region. However, for now, it is impossible to gather much evidence since that area is pretty much inaccessible. Still, Though what are the possibilities that a place so cold and uninhabitable as Antarctica could have held a civilization of people? In 2017, a team of geologists from the Alfred Wagener Institute for Polar Marine Research in Germany went to Antarctica and collected core samples from deep within its frozen sea floor. The objective was to analyze what the continent's climate might have been like in earlier times, and what they found was quite interesting. Essentially, the geological team is hypothesizing that while Antarctica's climate today might not support much life, it wasn't necessarily always like that Antarctica has survived a meteorite hit. Meteorites are among the biggest harbingers of extinction in the known universe whenever a meteorite hits a planet or a surface. It is pretty much a recipe for catastrophe. Living creatures in Antarctica Living creatures in Antarctica Featherstar, a newly named species from the Antarctic Ocean, represents the rich and strange diversity of those frigid waters where scientists have found new and unexpected creatures in recent years. In this case, a small flower star, named after a strawberry, resembles an alien mop head or the face hugger from the movie Alien. But not to worry, the strange creature eats tiny plankton and has no interest in human faces. Between 2008 and 2017, scientists used boats to trawl the Antarctic Ocean, hitting such locales as the South Orkney Islands, Elephant Island, the Davis Sea, and the South Sandwich Islands, all while looking for new specimens. They came up with a dramatic new flower star and three other crinoids, a group that's related to starfish and sea urchins. These adaptable creatures have lived in the world's oceans since about 490 million years ago and dominated the sea floor during part of the Mississippian period, which ran from 360 million years to 320 million years ago. They left behind a large amount of fossilized remains underwater and on what is now land, where their remains formed many of the limestone rocks. The new species, Promachocrinus fragarius from the Latin fragum, for strawberry has 20 arms and many more thin cirri, along with a strawberry-shaped body that earned the species its name. These organisms eat by positioning themselves in water currents and sticking out their arms, which are lined with tube feet that catch plankton and mucus. When the crinoid is ready to move on, it uses its arms to swim to a new perch. Two of the other new species, P. Unro and P. Asclasi, have similar anatomy, with 20 different arms each, although subtle distinctions set them apart. P. 
UNRWA has large siri that rival the size of its arms and pay. Asclasi has a large, conically shaped body. These strange animals illustrate how evolutionary forces have shaped the Antarctic Ocean, particularly during the last glacial maximum, about 20,000 years ago. Then, during the last surge of the last ice age, glaciers covered a large percentage of the Southern Ocean, which greatly affected evolution there. Penguins Penguins The chinstrap penguin is the most abundant penguin species of all, with an estimated population of 7-5 million breeding pairs. They inhabit the northern part of the Antarctic Peninsula, as well as the sub-Antarctic islands and islands surrounding the continent. The largest colonies are found on the South Sandwich Islands. A distinctive black line that looks like a chinstrap gives them their name. Chinstraps are very social and are therefore often seen with other penguin species, such as a daily penguins. The biggest threat to chinstrap penguins in the water, as to all penguins, are leopard seals and killer whales. Rising temperatures, linked to climate change, are causing krill populations to fall and rise. This affects penguin populations, which count krill as a large part of their diet. On land, they have to watch out for skewers, which like to feast on their eggs and chicks. There also exists the Adale penguins. Adale penguins are found in coastal areas and on small islands around the continent. During the warm months, from October to February, Adale penguins are mainly on land to breed and raise their chicks. Less is known about their behavior in winter because they spend it out at sea in the pack ice. They are excellent swimmers and can dive as deep as 175 m to catch fish, krill and amphipods. Scientists also believe that they can move more than 1 to 200 km from the breeding ground during the winter months. With an average size of 120 cm, emperor penguins are the largest penguin species in the world. An estimated 50 colonies are living on the Antarctic coastline. Each colony can be made up of around 5,000 penguins. They are so large that they can be seen on satellite images. Unlike many other penguin species, they are perfectly adapted to ice and snow. Therefore, they inhabit the whole Antarctic coastline and you can see them often gathering on icebergs. They are not only the largest penguins, but also the world's deepest diving birds. They can dive up to 550 meters deep and stay underwater for over 20 minutes. Emperor penguins are highly threatened by the effects of climate change. Unlike other species, they are very dependent on the ice because it is where they raise their young. They also feed primarily on krill, which is disappearing due to rising ocean temperatures. Whales Whales orcas are one of the most feared predators of the marine ecosystem. However, contrary to their name, they are completely harmless to humans. Worldwide, there is not a single known case of a human being being attacked by an orca in the wild. The dolphin-related whales can be found almost everywhere in the world's oceans. It's hard to keep track of how many there are because they are so widespread. However, there is a consensus that there are at least 50,000 individuals worldwide. Most orcas prefer to stay in Antarctic waters. Orcas are among the most intelligent animals in the world with complex social structures and hunting behavior. They hunt mainly in groups, using a very special technique called wave hunting. Together, they create a large wave that floods ice flows, washing resting seals or penguins off the flow. Another whale that calls the chilling cold of the Antarctic home is the blue whale. Blue whales are the largest existing creatures on Earth, reaching a length of 30 meters and weighing up to 200 tons. Female blue whales are usually larger than males and the largest individuals live in the southern oceans. In winter, most blue whales migrate to the equator to breed. After 12 months of gestation, the calves are born. They are already 8 meters big at birth. In the first half of the 20th century, the blue whale was almost exterminated by commercialized whaling. Since the 1960s, the blue whale has been protected. But populations seem to be recovering only slowly and the blue whales remain on the endangered species list. H. Umpback whales are the most common whale species in Antarctica. Chances are high that you see them on one of our Antarctic expeditions. Like penguins, seals and other whales, they mainly feed on Antarctic krill and small fish using various hunting techniques. One well-known method is bubble netting. This technique involves several humpback whales swimming under a group of fish and circling it. Then the whales start blowing bubbles to further enclose the circle of fish. Once they have herded the fish together, they can swim through it with their mouths open and filter out the krill. The sperm whales are another species of whales that thrive in the Antarctic. Sperm whales are probably one of the most unique creatures on Earth. They spend a large part of their lives in the depths of the seas. Only male sperm whales are found in Antarctic waters. 
Male individuals are usually one and a half times larger than females. The main part of their diet is giant squid, for which they dive up to 3,000 meters. Sperm whales are very sociable and live in groups of up to 50 members. The bond among them is so strong that it usually lasts a lifetime. Seals seals the leopard seal is one of the top predators of the Antarctic. Penguins, other seals and seabirds are constantly threatened by the large seals. But are they as evil as some documentaries portray them? The answer is no. Leopard seals keeps the numbers in check. Many other populations would grow too large without them, such as penguin and fur seal populations. This origin of the leopard seal goes back to the Ross Sea. The Ross Sea is a marginal sea in the Southern Ocean off the Antarctic coast. However, their habitat is not limited to the Ross Sea and they live all around the continent. Ross seals have a very atypical appearance and are much smaller than other Antarctic seals. As they don't leave Antarctic waters, little is known about the Ross seal. Recent estimates suggest that the population may be approximately 200,000. Another seal peculiar to Antarctic is the Wendell seal. The Weddell seal is the most common in Antarctica. They live around the continent, on the edge of the pack ice. In the Antarctic winter, Weddell seals do not migrate north, but stay in the ice and keep an ice hole open. They are perfectly adapted to life on the ice. There are no other seals that live further south. Weddell seals can grow up to 3-5 meters tall and weigh up to 600 kg. Since they have a lot of red blood cells, they are also excellent divers. They can stay underwater for up to 80 minutes. The main part of their diet is squid, fish and krill. The craybaiter seal is also another seal that calls the Antarctic home. The craybaiter seal is named after its diet. It is the only seal species that feeds mainly on krill. Antarctic krill make up more than 90% of its diet. They have a special tooth structure to filter the krill, which works much like the beard of whales. More krill becomes available to the seals as whale populations are declining. Estimates suggest that there are 30 million individuals worldwide today. The giants of the Antarctic seals and southern elephant seals are the largest seals on the planet and the largest mammals on Earth, apart from whales. However, they earn their name not from their size, but from the long, trunk-like snouts sported by adult males. Foraging widely across the Southern Ocean, southern elephant seals breed in densely packed colonies on subantarctic islands. Dominant males surround themselves with a harem of 40 to 50 females, which they fiercely defend against hopeful interlopers. Violent clashes are a common sight on South Georgia's beaches during mating season, with males battling for supremacy in aggressive, sometimes grisly matches. Elephant seals often bunch together in muddy pits called wallows, using their small flippers to cover themselves with cool, wet sand. Once hunted to near extinction for the rich oil rendered from their blubber, elephant seal populations have rebounded well under strong protections in recent decades. Bird life and the Antarctic bird life different species of the albatross family inhabit the southern part of the globe, and even though they might look similar at first view display a diverse set of different characteristics. The wandering albatross, for example, which got its scientific name from the Greek mythological hero Dioms gets wider as it gets older. On the other hand, the grey-headed albatross dominating colour is grey. In comparison to the other species of this fascinating bird family, the grey-headed albatross is the one that breeds the furthest south. Opposite to most other albatrosses, the black-browed albatross is not a solitary bird on the E and even follows shipping boats and other birds to get easy access to food. Last but not least, the light-mantled albatross has an overall light brown appearance and interestingly likes to follow whales and dolphins to save energy from hunting. All in all, albatrosses are incredibly fascinating, they are uniquely huge birds, and some species can even reach up to 70 years of age. Nevertheless, they are also increasingly endangered foremost because of climate change, and protecting them and their habitat should be a number one priority for everyone. There are two different kinds of sheathbills in the Antarctic region, the snowy sheathbill and the black-faced sheathbill. The snowy sheathbill is native to large parts of Antarctica and the subpolar region and is a classic example of a bird perfectly adapted to its habitat. It does not have strong demands when it comes to food and will eat almost everything to survive under such dire living circumstances. Arctic terns are medium-sized birds that migrate from the Arctic 